Well, welcome back to my Ford Transit Mark 8 camper van build, and this time we're going to get the solar panels on. Last episode we put uh, the Vanguard bars on, painted them, and painted most of the metal work for the solar f uh, frame. This time uh, we're going to get the bars, uh, the solar panels on themselves. Just going to pause the intro there. Uh, this is a message from the future. As you can see by the title, it says failed, which is because Mark 1 of the roof rack hasn't worked out how I planned. Uh, but everything in this video is still going to be relevant for Mark 2. Uh, so things, how I have constructed it and the way it's painted, that's all going to be the exact same. I'm just going to add a few extra bits and modify a few parts so it works. And it's still going to be 750 watts of solar as well. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I showed you guys you know, the failures along the way in this van build series and not just the successes. So uh, let's get back to the main video. Some of this is filmed a bit out of sequence as this intro is filmed after I filmed the end of the video uh, but you're going to be able to see the process so, so it's time to finally start assembly uh, I've got three of these panels I need to put on now um, however the frontmost panel overhangs a little bit when I say overhangs um, the front panel stops about the height of can't really see that aerial there past this front bar which isn't too far if you look at a lot of safari racks online and most of the sort of a lot of the commercial racks you buy if, uh, if it's a builder's van they come out about that far as well for storing ladders and so on but because it's a solar panel I don't really want this, ex this exposed massively to all the wind and any potential stone chips so I bought a bit of two milli two millimeter aluminium plate which I'm going to attach to the bottom of the panel. I thought it was used as a, as a guard, also to hide the whiteness of the panel as well, just because it sort of partly ruined the look. And um, how I'm going to need to cut some chunks out of this because I can't block off the entirety of the underside of the panel because airflow is quite important to panels. Panels don't function very well, as well, when they get hot because they get hot, hot anyway. But if I block all of the airflow underneath it, that's going to stop some of the cooling. So I'm going to take some chunks out of that and use it as sort of a, a front plate. Okay, annoyingly I've just realised um, that this panel when it got delivered, clearly whoever, the, the shipping company, bent it and it's got a big warp here. So I was meant to do that section on here. So I um, I cut out the, uh, the bent warped bit and kept the, uh, the, flat, the flat edge. So time to redraw. So I've drawn my cut lines and I'm going to do a little lip and bend that over just to give a bit of rigidity to the, um, the centre section. Right, well, I've never cut aluminium before, so let's see how it goes. Time to peel off the protective layer, sand it, clean it, and then um, paint it. Well, as much as as much as the um, the edges for strength were a nice idea. It has built myself into a corner, I didn't think about it. With these on, I can't access the bolts from the other side to actually bolt it together. So they're gonna to have to come off. It should be plenty strong anyway, it gets supported on three sides by the panel. Right, well I chuffed how those have turned out. So I've made a little jig like this. You put your pole, the tight tube in there, and drill through that hole. And it centers it nicely, and it'll go through everything. So it's the plan. So I think I'm going to start by getting this panel in place with just two bolts, and then this panel. 
and then I can take it apart and start bolting it actually together. So I'm going to drill a pilot hole with a 4mm bit because I've snapped my 3mm which would be better. Where have I put my jig? What the? cooled down a bit and I think I've got every bit mounted well bolt hole screwed for this section that I can start actually assembling it now so I'm just going to pause this video here and pause the actual video here because I've realized one it was really hot so I just wanted to get things done and I haven't talked to camera about a few of the things I'm doing and I haven't talked about any of the way this rack is sort of fastened together so for the rack, I am using um, key light uh, clamps, scaffolding clamps from the scaffolding and handwriting industry in the UK. And I think worldwide that these are used as well. As I can't weld aluminium, uh, that's how a lot of the this parts of these racks are attached. You insert it in to the clamp and then you screw up the grub screw. So the grub screws are stainless steel whilst everything else is made from aluminium. And that's how it's got the rattles around, but after you do up the grub screw, it's pretty locked in place. And that's how the racks join together. The grub screws should be perfectly sufficient to hold the, the rack together. Um, however, in the long term, they are threaded, so I will probably put some Loctite on the threads. And if that doesn't work, I'll do some sort of weekly checks to make sure everything's still rock solid together. I might replace the grub screws with bolts going all the way through or something along those lines. The actual rack itself, uh, for the actual solar rack itself, is held to the roof bars using these top hat brackets from Vanguard. Uh, so that's the shape of the, the roof bar itself. And normally the, these are used on the roof bar to attach the roof bar to the van. That way I'm going to be using them in reverse uh, with holes drilled through there. So the, the, the roof bar would be in that hole. That'll be on there and then bolted together. Uh, the actual bolts themselves, or the nuts and the bolts, I'm using a mix. I've got um, coach bolts, which have a square set and lock into there. And for the holding the actual panel on, I'm using 60 millimeter um, flange head um, stainless steel uh, bolts. All the nuts and bolts are A2 stainless steel. Uh, and I've just gone for black ones to fit with the theme of the rack. Um, the reason I've gone for the, the flange head is just because it's the, the most low profile of the heads available. And nut wise, because it's not visible, uh, I've just gone for non black ones because they're a bit cheaper, but I've gone for the uh, nylon nuts. So it's got the little nylon ring and that locks the, um, the nut in place, as well as stainless steel um, black anodized washers as well. And that is how the rack is all going to be held together. Um, ideally, if you had a welded rack where you could weld, and maybe in the long term I'll have someone, I take, I'll be able to take these off, and I have someone who can weld weld the tube together. But I don't at the moment. Um, I'm probably going to do weekly checks on driving for the first three months, just to make sure all the bolts are remaining up tight. And then after three months, if they are, I'll probably drop down to sort of a monthly check. So that's generally how the um, bars are held together. So all the sort of holes I'm drilling at the moment in the video are so these bolts can go through the bar into the panel and then be bolted with washers on the inside of the panel to hold the panel in place. You also see, uh, which I forgot to mention, is I'm using 50mm by 50mm uh, and 3mm thick aluminium angle on the front two panels to sort of bring them together and um, just to add a little bit more stability to the overall um, um, design. Right, well, back to the video where you can see me in a bad mood and not talking to the camera that much because it is absolutely roasting outside, relative for a British person, and I am very, very warm.
in well, this should slide in. Right, it's going to go, it's just going to be really snug. So I'm going to get these other bolts in first. Right, that panel's anchored, so now I need to get that plate all the way down the other end. Last little bit. Just need to hammer it in. About another five centimetres. Well, I don't really have anyone to help me, but uh, time to get the panel frame on the roof. Right. So this is what needs to go on. Oh, right. Jeez, a big fair, right? Yeah, so the, the, the second panel goes there, and then there's a space in my roof vent, and the third one goes back here. Oh, right. right. Those sit directly on the bar, so it's easy. That right. one overhangs. Um, on the angle, right? Yeah, so what I'm thinking is if we um, basically lift it up, we then get the front edge onto that piece of carpet, I'll be on the top of that and then pull it up and over and then just slide it on the carpet until it drops down. Yeah. That's all we really need help with, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. So at the minute I'm just doing all the fixings and I'm going to do them and then I'll show you afterwards because it's still wet and slippy and is a pain with the camera up there in the rain. Well, I'll be honest with you, this has not gone well and is a bit of an issue. Problem is, there is too much vibration in this. It's not so much this bending, because this is rock solid, the problem is is the bar, this bar is flexing and bending. So any resistance like that causes the, the actual mountain bars I've got to flex um, which is not what I want so I think since I need to move out of this house in a day's time and drive the length of the country I can't drive this on the van at the minute so I'm going to have to take it all apart and probably right so this needs to come off today however I had a little play and I found out that if I put between the base of this panel and the bar it's sitting on is a 5mm gap, which makes sense because it's sitting on 3mm of angle and 2mm of plate uh, in the edges. And when I put a little spacer in there, it almost eliminated the downwards wobble. So I figured out part of my issue is I have a, between the panel base and this bar, there is a 5mm gap. So I've just put a temporary spacer in there just to see what happens. And in the down direction, the um, vibration is pretty much eliminated. So I think I'm going to have to do is basically get a angle bit of aluminium angle and then basically bridge that and just bolt it directly to the base of the panel and the bar and that should fix my vibration issue. But I can't do that at the minute. So I'm going to have to take this off for now because I need to drive down to the length of the country. And then I'm going to put two bits of angle in there and fasten the that panel 
the whole the whole of that panel to the bar itself so there shouldn't be any flex in it and that should have fixed the issue but not for now well it's all off and that's pretty much going to end this video so it sort of failed in the end and um, although i am going to work on a mark ii and i realized what the issues were with mark one and how i'm going to fix it so we'll have a video later on where i recreate the three panel rack but add some additional parts to hopefully fix that vibration issue if i really can't fix it you'll see it in that video and i'll probably just drop down to having two panels on sitting on the front and the back bars yeah so once again thank you for subscribing um i hope you enjoyed watching my failure and that's the whole point of me making these videos is so you can see things which go well as well as things which don't go so well and i'm going to show them so feel free to subscribe and i'll see you next time cheers bye